Mental illness is a complex issue with wide array of diseases in which depression is one of them. Depression is a debilitating and pernicious cluster of symptoms that may persist for a period of weeks, months, or even years. It is an affective disorder that presents with depressed mood, loss of interest or pleasure, decreased energy, feelings of guilt or low self-worth, disturbed sleep or appetite, and poor concentration. It is. It's a major psychiatric uh, ailment where the individual goes through a spectrum of uh, disorders, uh, mainly psychologic, physical, and um, it has clear core criteria for diagnosis. You have mood changes, the mood is down, has psychomotor retardation and some other features. It's something that is uh, often than not uh, observable on the individual. Other people around can easily say that the person is losing interest in the environment, the person is getting withdrawn to him or herself, and the general physical activity are down, they are retarded. So one large, that's what depression is all about. It's actually a form of um, mental illness that is quite common. It's, found, it's one of the commonest kinds of mental illness. It's majorly characterized by um, undue sadness. And when I say undue, that's because um, usually you're unable to pinpoint exactly why the patient is sad. Or probably even if you're able to like tie it down to something in particular, the sadness is usually in excess of what you expect. Depression is a kind of medical condition whereby an individual has an intense sadness due to overthinking and as a result of, it could be as a result of death of loved one, as a result of maybe divorce, or separation from one's partner, failure, general failure, or broken home, loss of job, and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, basically speaking, um, depression is uh, a state of uh, mental health, a negative one to say, where the individual experiences sadness, um, sorrow perhaps over things that the individual had lost or maybe over some calamities that um, have befallen the individual at some point in time. So um, this issue, the thinking of what was lost, of what uh, travails one has gone through or is going through um, definitely leads certain people into a state of depression. Depression is one of the most commonest mental disorder in our society today. According to the World Health Organization statistics, about 300 million people around the world are suffering from depression. In Nigeria alone, about 7 million people, which represent 43% of the people suffering from depression and drug abuse in the country. Depression is really, really a significant problem in Nigeria because it has a toll on you as a person, both psychologically or mentally, and it also can lead to some physical problems if it is too much. I'll give you an instance. Somebody who lost all he had, lost the mother due to Boko Haram um, activity, lost the brother. The brother was actually slaughtered right in his presence, lost his job and everything. That kind of person can go into depression. And if that depression is not really, really tackled on time, it can lead to suicide attempts or suicide that is completed. So you would agree with me with that little example that um, depression is actually something that needs to be tackled so that it will not lead to loss of life of the individual. Depression is very rife in the Nigerian society. News on daily basis of youth that commit suicide due to breakup in relationships, failing of courses in school, inability to solve financial needs and for many more no it's clear it's, it's a fact it's, uh, especially for men and even for women too when people find it difficult to make ends meet and are pressing financial issues such that your, your financial uh, load is more than your financial strength so you, a person now runs into individual and there can be very 
entire situations, medical, somebody wants to be treated as an operation, one wants to deliver, there's somebody to pay, somebody needs blood in the hospital. At times, uh, educational want to pay school fees. If you don't pay, they will draw the check from the school. And you have uh, police cases and things like that. So there are issues that weigh heavily on the individual, and they cannot find a way out, and they finally the press is there. Academic failure, of course. Most students that have that are being depressed are depressed as a result of failure, academic failure, maybe because they are not in good standing, because of one carryover or the other, that can result to depression. Then, on few occasions, maybe broken, broken hearts, when they, when they have broken when they broke up with their boyfriend or girlfriend due to disappointment generally from a relationship. Those are the two common things that lead to depression in university or higher institutions of learning. First, if you have somebody who is depressed, the first thing is to bring the person to the hospital. Because we have different severity of depression. We have mild depression, we have just uh, moderate, and then we have severe depression. Mm -hmm. If you have somebody who have mild depression and then you catch the person early, it will not progress to the worst one. And the worst form of depression is the one that comes with suicidal ideation, suicidal thought, and eventually people commit suicide because they are depressed and then they feel like there's nothing worth living for anymore. So before it gets to that stage, if you catch them young and then you Avest the whole thing and you cure it, you'll be fine. So uh, that's, that's it. Depression and anxiety symptoms are reported to be common among university students in many regions of the world. <laughs> there is a difference. But just like I said, they're they, they, they like twins. They at times move hand in hand, right? Um, it said that even those who are depressed are or who eventually get depressed are people who premorbidly have very high levels of anxiety. There are people who get anxious excessively over little things. They, for people who have such personality, they may eventually come down with depression. Then even in depression, so we know that even anxiety for a, that has you know tarried for a very long time that has not received treatment may eventually lead to depression because the individual is in distress. You are always anxious, probably in you know social settings or you know just generalized anxiety that is free floating. You are always anxious in every situation. If you don't get management for it on time, you may eventually it may eventually lead to depression. For somebody who is depressed, also may have symptoms of anxiety you know, coexisting with depression. So they are actually two distinct entities, but most times they, 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 there's what we even call the mixed depressive anxiety state too. So at times you may have them together. There are many types of depression and they differently affect an individual. The sadness is usually in excess of what you expect, right? And it's usually a prolonged form of sadness. You know, we all feel sad once in a while. Definitely, there are some things that we experience that makes us feel sad. But usually, you notice that the sadness is not something that is sustained, right? Over some period of time, you eventually get back to your usual self. If probably you are in an environment where they've said something that should warrant you smiling, you will smile. But usually, in depression, it's a prolonged form of sadness that it doesn't respond to, you know, emotional situations that around the individual. So they are sad for most part of the day, usually unduly. They, they have what we call loss of energy, or what is otherwise termed, termed as energia. They just seem not to have energy to do things. They would rather just sleep or probably just withdraw themselves, you know, into their shells. Uh, also, there's loss of interest in otherwise pleasurable activities, what we call anhedonia. So for someone who, you know, primarily is someone who enjoys watching football, you know, and probably the Euro European League is coming up and you get to see this kind of person. Rather than watch football, you'd rather just be in his room sleeping, not wanting to interact with anybody. You should actually begin to suspect that there's something wrong. So there are a host of other symptoms, but ma just like I said, majorly those are the three um, major symptoms of depression.
Depression is identified as one of the four major diseases in the world. Risk factors include a family history of the condition, major life changes, certain medications, chronic health problems, and substance abuse. No, no, there may be a little bit, but it's not. It's something mostly acquired. It's an acquired psychiatric disorder. Um, well, we don't want to use a disease because, you know, when you say a disease, like you, are, you can tie it down to a pathology going on, like there's something particularly wrong. For depression or mental illnesses generally, it's a, it's a host of several factors. You cannot at times say it's this thing, you know. At times you're able to say, okay, probably this precipitated it. But it should have been something, it's, when you look at it as a whole, it's a host of several factors. There may be genetic influence, you know, coupled with some psychosocial um, adversity or psychosocial problems coming into play. There'll be just one thing that may now precipitate the illness. But obviously, it's not that one thing that will cause the illness, right? There'll be a host, the individual would have been vulnerable. Because just like I said, um, it's not, for instance, we know that adverse life conditions, for instance, can lead to depression. But you would agree with me that it's not everybody that goes through an adverse life condition that would eventually come down with depression. So that people who, you know, have been issue are already vulnerable. There are some other underlying factors to it. So you cannot really say that, okay, it's this. You know, for instance, somebody who has brain um, tumor or probably an abdominal disease. Once the surgeons go in and remove whatever is causing that pathology, it goes. But for depression, you can't say, okay, this is it. Let's go there and just remove it. So it's actually a disorder. It's, it's not something that is specific. In the balance of religion, depression is somewhat linked to trials and tribulations, as it is assumed at a point in the life of every individual there is a point where the smooth going gets tough and only with patience, perseverance and faith would one come out of such situations. The Quran says in um, three different places, La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa usaha. Then he says, La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa ma'ataha. So Allah does not overburden a soul beyond what it can bear. Now this is clear. The implication of this verse is that Allah, who is the creator of the soul, knows the limit, the elasticity of each soul and what it can bear of sorrow. Whenever Allah will put a soul to test, He will not test a soul beyond what it can bear. Now, what a soul can bear does not, of course, mean that it has to be minor or it has to be major. Yeah? So, when Allah tests anyone, He expects the person to be patient and to persevere. But then, because it is a natural instinct to be sad, the individual might be sad, and then from sadness, he falls into depression. So this state of mind, the, that's the depression now, does not conflict with the fact that Allah does not test his soul beyond what he can bear. Because he is the creator, he knows what his soul can bear, and he will never put a body on his soul other than what he can bear. But that aside, the one I have mentioned that the real interpretation of this verse is that Allah does not put obligation, religious obligation, on any soul beyond what it can carry out. Now take for example, the angels, they have limitless abilities, you know, that only Allah knows. We cannot be angelic in our um, character and disposition. Angels do not eat, they do not drink, they do not have sexual desires, they do not sleep. They are like robotic creatures. Wherever Allah commands them to go is where they go. Human beings will have a mind of our own, right? We eat, we drink in order to survive. And we have some of these natural instincts that keep the human race going. Without the sexual instinct in us, the human race might have gone into extinction. So, whatever Allah will burden the angels with, it is what they can bear. Not eating, not drinking is what they can bear without any stress. For us, we can't bear that body. That is why he has commanded us to eat and to drink. So the real meaning of this verse is not about the calamities that will strike the human soul. It is about the religious obligations that Allah will place on each soul. Allah will not command you to do what you cannot do as a believer. Target located. Engaging target.
University life marks a transitional period for students, during which some students move away from family and home for the first time and lose the traditional adult supervision and traditional social support. These changes have been recognized as risk factors for developing depression. I was depressed sometimes around 2018 and what caused the depression was I was I had seven carryovers when I was in the level. I'm a brilliant student so I felt what could have caused it for me to have carryover and then school fees issues came in so I was looking at it like so I want to graduate with my friend so I was always down. So then my friend noticed, I didn't tell anybody that I had seven carryover. So my friend then noticed how I was self-isolating myself. I don't hit well. So they reported me to the guidance and counseling in the school. So I went there. The woman asked me some questions and all. Then she told me that I was depressed and she called my friend him, my close friend, and talked to them how they can help me. Like, they should talk to me that it is not the end of the world. I was placed on some drugs and after a while, I felt better. I've been diagnosed with depression since when I was in SS1. It was due to the fact that my height was looking abnormal and academically I was not sound, which made most of my peers and my teachers look down on me because I was tall and I was not useful. Lots of insults and bad comments made me feel sad and made me feel depressed, which I grew with over the years. But now I'm on medication, so I believe I'm getting better with it. When it comes to depression, I feel depression is a topic that isn't well spoken for. It's as sensitive as it gets, it's taken with leisure hands. Depression happens to the best of us, the people in which you feel you can't get depressed. I, I once happened to have a friend, Yusuf. He died years back. The, he, when you meet Yusuf, you feel he has nothing to worry about. He, he was someone with the, the best smile I've ever seen. He was someone that, that loves doing everything, but I, got, I guess life got the best of him. He, he died in the year 2018. He, he took his own life by taking Sniper. Depression among Nigerian youth and students have been linked to several factors, ranging from substance abuse to stressful life events. These behaviors have been associated with students from time immemorial. The media, as a social agent, has been saddled with so much responsibility and they could play a very important role in the alleviation of depression from organizing educative programs to providing outreach. Yes, I agree totally with you that um, depression is underrated in this part of the world, most especially in Kwara State. However, in states like Lagos, where I trained, the awareness is a little bit higher than here. But we are trying as much as possible to make awareness about mental health and depression at large. Uh, part of the awareness we are trying to do is to get the government of the day. First, the authority of the General Hospital is becoming more aware of mental health problems and how to tackle it. Then, we are trying to partner with the government of the day and we are, like I said before, we are trying to do an awareness, which is the World Suicide Prevention Day, which is coming up um, October 10th, 2020. And um, our venue is going to be Seminar Hall, General Hospital in Lorry. We are actually invited to, if you can make it. So those are the steps we are taking. And then we make a lot of publicity about stigmatization. We stop the stigma. Because some people may hearing that you have a little bit of mental abnormality might not want to share spoon with you anymore. Meanwhile, it is not contagious. It is not an infectious disease that is contagious. So you can actually share spoon with that kind of person. You can hug the person. Even your girlfriend can go, get depressed. Are you going to say you are not doing it again because the person is depressed? They can actually come out of the depression anyway. I can't say they are well enlightened about depression. And the reason is because 
some of them might be depressed, but they might not know that they are being depressed because they are not aware of what depression is all about. And some may be depressed or some may be having some kind of challenges, but they may they they are likely to deny such problem. They will not want to admit that they have that problem. That can result to depression because if you don't admit that you have a problem and you have a problem that you don't know that you have. And in counseling, there's what we call uh, 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 different kinds of referral agents. We have different types of, uh, different ways of referring clients for counseling session. The first type is self-referral. I want to uh, digress a little bit, also, although I'm still on point. That is self-referral. If a client feels that and admits that he or she has some problem or some challenges, such clients can come for counseling on his own. You understand? That is self-referral. Then the other one is referral by loved ones. This could be a lecturer, a parent, a friend referring someone for counseling. You know, you can't compare someone that admitted that he or she has a problem with someone that is being referred that maybe does not even does not even see it as a problem. You see, there are two different things, right? Then the third one is referral by the counselor, him or herself. For instance, if I if I if I see a student or someone having some challenges that he or she does not even notice, he doesn't even see it as a problem. I can invite such person, right, for counseling. Depression is classified as a disorder that can grow into a major disease. There are specific antidepressants that are used to treat uh, depression. Drugs like uh, imipramine, drugs like transcopal, even uh, triptizol that can be used to treat depression. You can also treat by counseling, uh, counsel the individual by physical interaction with the individuals. Uh, so uh, there are different modalities of treatment. But the main theory really is medic is uh, is uh, is, uh, is drug is drug therapy. It's it's something that is manageable. Right? It's something that is manageable. Um, we have several types of depression, right? Um, and usually depression is even a disorder, it's a mood disorder, just like we said. With or without treatments, the life the, the lifespan would be like six to eighteen months. The individual would eventually come out of the depression. Right? But why we insist on treating is because we all know that it has it has some attendant consequences that if we don't, you know, treat on time and try to nip in the bud, may even cost the patient, the patient his or her life. And we don't want that happening because suicide is a complication of depression. Then we have what we call severe depression with psychotic symptoms. Some people may actually have psychotic symptoms like hallucinations, every voices of people they cannot see talking to them, seeing things others cannot see while they are fully awake, you know. Feelings that people are persecuting them and they want to harm them. So in situations like that, you don't want to wait and say, okay, we all know that with or without treatment, they would eventually, you know, resolve. No, because at that point, they constitute harm to themselves or, or, and even to people around them. They are going through a lot of distress. So you want to treat as soon as possible. And usually between episodes, they do excellently well. They do excellently well. There's a, for someone who has had a previous episode, there's a higher risk of coming down with another episode. But just like I said, once they use their medications, you know, adequately, they do very well. They do very well. And even by, we use medications, once they, they go back to premorbid pre states, they are fine. Use medications for about six months afterwards and they can then stop and they just monitor over time. Yes, I would say counseling is more effective for kids that have depression because Number one, the drugs, the antidepressants that we give people who have depression might be way too heavy for them, their body to metabolize. It can cause harm and a lot of side effects in them. And most times we don't really diagnose children as having depression. However, we rather give um, the mental illness they have another name. You've heard of antisocial personality disorder, attention deficit 
attention deficit hyperactivity disorder so most times children don't get depressed like that you don't really call it depression you see more of depression in adults you understand so we really don't give antidepressant to children like that we rather do counseling psychotherapy counseling and just talk to them and this is the most important thing is prayer now when somebody is so sad that he falls into a state of depression, such a person needs Rukhaya. Rukhaya is spiritual exorcism. It's a form of Adhkar that can be recited by the, by the person himself or can be recited for the person, you know, in his or her presence. Such a person should be assisted with prayer beginning with Rukhaya. So it will help the person to heal faster because Shaitan is always where um, a person is sad. When somebody is in a bad state, Satan will be there to continue to fuel the sorrow. So that such a person loses hope in Allah and say, Look, oh Allah, why have you done this to me? I have worshipped you this long. I have done this. So why me? Satan will continue to fuel it. But when you do Rukhaya, Satan will run away. So if you have anybody that is depressed, one of the things that you should do is to assist such a person with prayer, beginning with Rukhaya. Not just praying for that person, you know, behind this or back but doing Rukhaya for that person so that it will reduce the interference and influence of Shaitan, you know, in, um, in afflict, inflicting the person more harm. Speaking to um, psychologists and counselors. So if you have a child that is depressed or a sibling that is depressed or friend, the, one of the things we need to do is to introduce such a person to a professional psychologist and counselor who can speak to the mind of that person, you know, advise the person on what and what to do in order to get out of depression. Well, there are so many solutions to depression. One of the solutions is one need to admit that he or she has a problem that he cannot solve by himself. Admit, you need to admit it that you need help. That is number one solution. Number two, you need to open up to someone who is ready to listen to you. That is number two. Advisably, a professional counselor. That is number two. Number three, one should not take things too personal. You shouldn't keep things to yourself. If you have any problem bothering your mind, look for someone you can pour your mind to. Look for someone you can express everything that is bothering your mind. That is number three. Then number four, don't isolate yourself from help. It's possible for you not to seek a counselor around, isn't it? But there are people that are willing and are ready to listen to you. A good friend, for instance. The parents be it the mother, the father, or one sibling. One can open up to them. One should not keep the problem. You shouldn't keep your problems to yourself alone because we cannot solve all our problems. And there's what we call talking cure in counseling. Talking. That is, the more you talk, the more you see out what is bothering your mind, your concerns, your problem, depending on how you want to call it the more you will feel relieved. That is why you call it talking cure in psychology. So open up to people. Problems are bound to, to, to occur in our life because the life itself is full of different challenges. It's full of ups and downs. We can't be happy all the time, right? And we can't be sad all the time. The life is, is full of all sorts of things, happiness, sadness, and what have you? So one should not take whatever happens to one, one should not take it too serious as if that is the end of the world or that is the end of life. Every disappointment they say is what? It's a blessing in disguise. So one should not keep one's problem to him or herself. Open up to people who are ready to listen and who are ready to give their own candid advice. The situation of Nigeria, which ranges from insecurity, poor economic growth, 
poor governance amongst others is sufficient to push every other citizen into depression. The Nigerian mass media should change the notion of bad news sell fast as most news content as of today lead to depressive thoughts. Parents, guardians and folks should observe their words in the university for changes in behavior and ensure to give the needed support. Mm -hmm.